do you realize that uh, the first case of Alzheimer's disease was diagnosed in 1903. If you've ever seen an AD brain out on a table compared to a normal brain, it's very easy to see the difference. Even a layman can see the difference. Now, you know, in the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th century, you know, autopsies were very common in medical schools and uh, by medically trained people to look at what caused people. And no one ever reported a brain like that until 1903. And we started placing amalgam fillings in the mouse, I mean, at, at a higher level than normal in about 1840. That's when the Concourse brothers bought, brought uh, the amalgam uh, uh, material to the United States. Now, what happened, we had very low levels of amalgam usage. You had to be relatively wealthy, you had to live in the city, you had to have access to a dentist, and at the start of the 1840s, all the way up to the end, most dentists were the town barber or the town blacksmith. So we didn't have a lot of dentists, and so we started increasing the amount. But when they really increased was when the GIs came back from World War II, and on the GI Bill, went to dental school, and they called that the golden age of dentistry was in the 50s and 60s and 70s when the amount of amalgam placement went up dramatically in children and adults, anyone who needed it. And now we're talking about the, the rate of Alzheimer's disease per, say, 10,000 people. Back in the uh, 1940s, that wasn't so high. And today, it's very high because those baby boomers are now reaching the age where dementia can set in, where they're getting older, and they're the ones that are the test pattern because they're the ones that have the highest level of amalgam fillings ever uh, produced. And we are seeing that the rate per 10,000 of Alzheimer's in our population has gone up dramatically. A lot of that's because they live a bit longer, but I think a lot of that's also because they've been breathing mercury vapor for you know, about 50 years of their life. We're talking the 50s, most of the people in the farm country, if they had a bad tooth that hurt, they'd go have a pole. You know, 10 years later, they go put an amalgam filling in it because they could afford it. I mean, at one time, amalgam fillings, going to a dentist was very expensive, and the people just didn't go. If I'm correct that I think mercury from dental amalgams is a major contributor to mercury-induced uh, uh, dementia or Alzheimer's-type dementia, then as we increase these people who have been exposed to the high copper amalgam fillings, which release much more mercury than the old amalgams back used during the early 50s, and 60s, you're going to see a higher rate of uh, mercury-induced dementia.